Well, that, that intro made it sound not fun at all. Uh, so I'm an economist. I'm supposed to make economics fun. I'm going to try and do this. It's the first time I've been here. I know this moves very quickly. Todd Wilkinson did this last night. I'm doing this today. Some of the slides in here are Todd's, so I don't know what I'm going to say when those slides appear. <laughs> Um, Todd calls this the Green Coast. Um, I'm betting him a six-pack, it doesn't stick, but anyway. Um, that's, that handsome devil is me. I'm on the cover of the Christian Science Monitor. Todd was in my living room a few weeks ago, and he said, you know, Ray, when you and I first met 25 years ago, when you started talking about how the economy of Bozeman was going to change, guess what? You were right. And so, a lot of communities around the West find themselves at a crossroads. Um, our perception, we look around, we see agriculture, we see resource development, um, we see uh, universities and we see tourism, and that's our perception of what drives the economy. There's a lot that's actually happening behind the scenes, and what I'm gonna share with you is some of what's happening in Bozeman. It starts with pioneers like Greg Gianforte, who started Right Now Technologies, one of the people who discovered Bozeman and said, you know, instead of like the other pioneers bringing cattle with them, he brought with him the idea that the quality of life of Bozeman could be used to attract talented people. And this is a billboard on the way up to Big Sky back in the early 1990s. I don't know if you remember this, but it said, great careers right here, right now. I love it here.com, apply online, right now technologies. This is what cracks me up. Bozeman, Dallas, London, and Munich. <laughs> so there we are, we've been discovered and people move here from all over the place. The blue lines are where people came from, the red lines are where people um, are going to, so we've lost some people to Florida and New York and Alaska and Hawaii apparently, but most of the people are coming from the west, they're coming in particular from adjoining counties. Um, of course, this is not without its controversy. Um, this, this, this appeared both as a t-shirt, which I've worn out, and a postcard uh, in the early 1990s when the phenomena of what academics call amenity migration was first starting to take hold. So it's led to all, all sorts of controversy, of course. You know, do we have open range for the cattle? Do we kick the cows off? Do we have the new west or the old west where we drill? Do we need more development? Do we say, no, enough is enough? What's the right type of development? Can we have some land use planning in this county, please? So those are the controversies we're wrestling with. Um, our history, of course, is one of logging and mining and oil and gas development and cattle, um, agriculture. That's still, to this day, people's perception of what drives Montana's economy, that we're primarily a resource-dependent state, and then this is where most people are employed. This pie chart shows you the employment in Montana's economy today. The first thing you should take home from this is there's a lot of little wedges there. It's very diverse. There's lots of little, think of them as slices uh, or pieces of layers of the cake, right? Resource in agriculture is about 8% of total, which is surprising to some people. When you look in the last decade, where most of the new job creation has been, healthcare, real estate, government, services, um, professional, scientific, and technical services, the bulk of the growth of Montana's economy today is not just in service industries, but it's in the high wage component of services, another surprising thing. Now, when you look at downtown Bozeman or you look at our valley, you think agriculture, you think the university, and you think tourism. It's what we see when we drive through town. But there's something surprising happening behind that western facade. If you have some spare time, go see what's happening on the second floor, and it's actually quite remarkable. One of the things, the graph on the left you'll see, is lots of growth in service industries. Much of that is high-wage service industries, in particular in Bozeman followed by non-labor income. This is now 35% of total income in this county. Non-labor income is retirement and investment income. So I'm gonna talk about that a little bit. For some people, of course, they've <laughs> made their money elsewhere, they've got a nest egg, they decide, let's go to Bozeman. I saw a red convertible uh, Porsche one time and the license plate said Vision Quest. <laughs> Like he went up to the mountains and said, I need a red Porsche. <laughs> so this is investment dollars over time. You can see it growing steadily. There's of course a big dip right here during the most current recession. 
In Montana, it's about $7.5 billion. It's 20% of all total personal income. Just for comparison, I compared it to agriculture, which is $634 million of personal income, or 2.5%. Let me pick on geographers a little bit. This is how we educate our children. We say, here's a map, and on these maps, you'll see little icons, right? If there's an icon for Florida, it's an orange juice, right? It's an orange. If an icon for Southern California, it would be a movie reel. Well, the icons, of course, that we teach our children from Montana is an oil rig, a stock of wheat, some cattle, pick, pick and shovel, and just retirement dollars alone are two times the personal income from people working in farming, ranching, oil and gas, mining, and wood products combined. So we don't replace it with an image of a wheelchair, hopefully. <laughs> the goose that's laying the golden egg, of course, is our surrounding landscapes. We just finished a study and we said for every 100,000 acres of wilderness, national park, or national monument, on average, a county's per capita income increases by over $4,000. This is taking into consideration everything else that might drive the economy. So here's one theory of development. We have on the left, agriculture and resource extraction, what brought us here originally. Then we have tourism. If the tourism's big enough, we start developing the transportation infrastructure. Witness our airport. The minute you do that, boom, the economy starts to diversify and everybody else can move in here. So what do we take from this? Is this the future of Montana's economy, digging up dirty fuel to be exported to China so they can burn it and make a bunch of cheap plastic crap that we buy in Walmart? <laughs> or is there a better future for places like Montana and for other places around the West? And do we do like Greg Gianforti said, and let's use this as an opportunity to attract talent and to keep talent. This is one of the companies behind the Western Facade, right downtown at Schedulicity, one of our amazing local software companies. So that, in a nutshell, is the transformation that Bozeman's economy has gone through. It's happening all over the West. Thanks. <laughs>